Sometimes I feel like I'm actually gonna take my finger off with these, even though this is a much better one than my one before. <laughs> I need to be careful. Well, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Cocktails with Kira. My name is Kira, and I'm a whiskey loving Irish gal who's on a cocktail voyage of discovery. If you are new here, I have zero professional bar experience other than a passion for making mixed drinks at home and showing you how I do it. So hit that subscribe button, stick around, and we both just might learn something because if I can do it, you can do it. So in today's video, we are going to be revisiting a cocktail that is so dear to my heart. It is probably my favorite cocktail of all time, at least of those that I've tried already. So today we are going to be making a Sazerac again. So yes, we are going to be revisiting the Sazerac cocktail. And you might be wondering, Kira, why are we making a Sazerac again? We've already been here. We've seen the video. If you haven't seen the video, I will link it below, by the way. The pure, unadulterated joy in my face when I try a Sazerac for the first time. It was a year ago now, actually almost a year and a month ago, and it was during lockdown, and I just was so incredibly happy. It was the most beautiful thing I had tasted in a very, very long time. So the reason why we are redoing the Sazerac today is because I feel like my at-home bar has improved a little bit since then. I feel like I have slightly better ingredients to work with and spirits. And I really just want to make it again. I mean, I have made it a lot since then, but I haven't made it again here on the channel. So yes, for all of those reasons combined, I'm going to be making a Sazerac again today. Now I have made it since then, of course. It's probably one of my favorite cocktails to make at home. But as I said, I haven't done it here on the channel. We've got some new ingredients to work with, a particular rye that I'm really excited to open and try for the first time. So let's get to it. So before we get into a little bit of history about the Sazerac and I make my new and improved version at home, for the first time with you, I would like to take a second to tell you about my Patreon. Not only is it a great way of supporting my channel, but you can also have access to exclusive content. You can get exclusive discounts on my newly launched merch, and you can also see the footage that is just too tipsy for YouTube. And so without rambling on too much, let's get into a little refresher of the history of a Sazerac. If you watched my initial Sazerac video, which I highly recommend you do, then you would have gotten a little bit of a snippet of the Sazerac's history. And the thing about it is that it is rather murky, it's a little bit contested. Like a lot of the incredible old cocktails out there, it has a bit of a murky history. So as we touched on in the video, it is claimed by many to be the oldest cocktail out there, but this isn't exactly true. Now it is one of the oldest when we're looking back to the very early days of cocktail in the late 1700s, early 1800s, coming into the golden age of cocktails, the Sazerac was really one of the big ones. But in recent times, there's been a lot of research done on this, a lot of historians that are really passionate about cocktails. But essentially what they deduced is, although many claim that the Sazerac is the oldest cocktail, and yes, it is very, very old, it is not the oldest. And you could probably attribute the title of the oldest cocktail to the improved whiskey cocktail, of which the Sazerac is kind of a variation of. So as I said, it's all very murky, it's a little bit incestuous, it's all very interesting, but it's a very, very old cocktail and it's stuck around for a reason. So again, if you want more kind of concise, detailed notes on its history, I will link some resources in the description. But another very interesting and fabulous thing about the Sazerac is that it hails from New Orleans. Approximately a year ago, when my first Sazerac video went up, I pronounced it New Orleans with my Irish accent and I was, um, politely, not so politely corrected in the comments. So Norlands or Nolans if you're trying to be even more authentic, but I don't think it sounds quite convincing coming from my accent. So it's from New Orleans, which is a place that I'm absolutely dying to visit because most of my favorite cocktails come from there. And like a Vucure, you've got the La Louisiane that I made recently here on my channel. Let's get into it and let's look at the ingredients for a Sazerac. So although it can be made with cognac, a typical Sazerac is made with rye whiskey. So as I mentioned, I used a different rye in my previous video, but I picked up, especially for the purposes of this video and for making my Sazeracs, some Sazerac rye, which I'm so excited about. So many people recommended this. I did ask for some recommendations for some great ryes and bourbons, particularly for the cocktails that I love. And this one was probably the most recommended rye 
particularly for a Sazerac and it's no feckin' wonder because it is called <laughs> Sazerac rye. And of course, for a Sazerac, we're gonna be using some absinthe. I think I used some Trené wrap absinthe before. I, I don't even know where I got it. It was like sitting in the back of my cupboard most likely. But if you've been watching any of my absinthe cocktail videos recently, of which there's been quite a few, I've been using La Fille Parisienne, this beautiful French absinthe, and it is just chef's kiss. It's stunning in cocktails. So I think these two together are gonna be a really beautiful thing. As I said, I've made Sazeracs recently with this, but I've not made a Sazerac with Sazerac rice, so it's very exciting. And then of course, our final ingredient, and one that hasn't changed since the first time I made a Sazerac, is the Peychaud's bitters. These are, again, a product of Norlands, and they're absolutely delicious. There's a few cocktails you can include them in, but I feel like I haven't used them enough. So again, if you have any other recommendations for cocktails that use Peychaud's, please let me know in the comments, because I want to try them. Another ingredient that the Sazerac uses is either a sugar cube or some simple syrup. Now, when I first made the Sazerac, I used a sugar cube and muddled it with the Peychaud's bitters. However, a lot of people are saying that simple syrup works even better in this drink. And because I'm substituting for, let's say, slightly more improved spirits, I might as well try the simple syrup. And then the final element to this drink is a garnish. And we're gonna be using just a twist of lemon peel in our drink. And that is everything that we need. I have been rambling on for long enough. I am dying to make this. I'm dying to try the Sazerac rye. So let's go ahead and make a new and improved Sazerac. So we'll start off with our Peychaud's and we're going to do four to five three, four, five dashes of Peychaud's. There's a little bit here. Mm. So then we're gonna go in with our simple syrup. We're gonna do one to two bar spoons, depending on how sweet you like it. This is a pretty decent bar spoon, so I'm just gonna use one because I don't necessarily want it to be super sweet. We're gonna do a generous 60 mils because again, this is a very spirit forward drink. So the Sazerac rye is really going to be the star of the show. I think it's one of those cocktails that it's a great one to use your good bourbons and ryes and what have you in it because you're really letting it shine. It's just like an old fashioned, you know? Really quickly before I forget, we are going to do our absinthe rinse and that is basically just adding in a little bit into the glass and then we're gonna swivel it around nicely to coat the inside of the glass. So now it is time to strain. This is definitely diluted a little bit in our mixing glass, but no harm. Sometimes I feel like I'm actually gonna take my finger off with these, even though this is a much better one than my one before. I need to be careful. We're just gonna do a little express of those beautiful oils and aromatics, get those into the glass. Some people like to chuck their peel afterwards and not include it, but I think it looks very pretty against kind of the orangey color. So I'm gonna pop mine in. So that is it, our Sazerac is done. I'm very, very excited to try this version with the Sazerac rye because I'm just dying to try it in a cocktail. So if you will join me over on my cocktail drinking chair, let's try a new and improved Sazerac and see how she tastes. Okay, so I am back in my cocktail drinking chair. My Sazerac is here. She is looking very beautiful. Honestly, I did not intend today to match my Sazerac so well in my outfit, but there you go. Anyway, I'm dying to try this. I really, really want to see what the Sazerac rye tastes like with the absinthe and everything. So, cheers. It's just heaven, it is heaven in the glass. Like you could just drink this in one go. It is just nectar of the gods, oh my goodness. As I suspected, the Sazerac rye is so smooth in this drink, it just plays really, really well with the absinthe. Like you can get all of the separate notes of like, well, I suppose with the absinthe, it's like a very strong taste in a drink and you can always tell when it's been added. Like it's really hard to mask absinthe in a cocktail, even if it's just a little bit. But in this instance, it's just so smooth. You can get it, but it's not harsh at all. It's beautiful. And the Peychaud's work so well and the rye is delicious and so good. So given that my initial reaction to trying a Sazerac way back over a year ago was so positive, I really do think this is such an improvement on it. And so with that, I would love to know, how do you make your Sazerac? I know there are some huge Sazerac fans in the comments, so please let me know. Now that I've tried Sazerac rye, which is 
absolutely beautiful. What other rise should I use to make a Sazerac or how else should I make it? I know there are different ways to do this. Let me know in the comments because I just find it so interesting seeing how people make their cocktails and it always inspires me to try different ways of making some of my favorites. So if you enjoyed watching me make my new and improved Sazerac, then feel free to give this video a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more easy cocktails that you can make at home, I will leave a link to a playlist up here. And as always, if you have not yet subscribed, then please please do. I post new videos every single week and I would love to have you back for more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next one. Cheers! Mm -hmm.